Salt Company, producer of salt for every farm and home use, brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. In just a minute, today's exciting adventure will begin. But first, have you farm folks heard the news? Yes, sir, it's great news. Your copy of the new 1947 Cary Farm record book is waiting for you now. Be sure you get it at your Cary Salt dealers. Say, this big 1947 edition is even better than last year. It gives you everything you need to maintain a complete check on farm expenses and income. Helps you plan ahead for more profitable crops. Makes it easy to compute income tax. Go to your Cary Salt dealer tomorrow. Ask him for your copy. It's free. A Christmas reminder from him to you. If your dealer supply is exhausted, just send 10 cents one dime to cover mailing costs to Cary's, C-A-R-E-Y-S, Cary Salt in care of this station. Be sure to get your 1947 Cary Farm record book right away. But now, The Shadow. The Shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Murders on the Main Stem. I got the part, Margot. I'll say I'm excited. You know what did it? My hair. Yes, darling, my beautiful, golden, fine, fun hair. Oh, bother, there's someone at the door. Hang on a minute, Margo. Be right back. Oh, hello. Come in. Do you mind waiting till I finish with the telephone? Margo? Where was I? Oh, yes, telling you how I got the part. Well, I knew they were looking for a blonde actress, but I didn't think they'd go that crazy over my hair. I was... What do you want? Let's go! My girl. X-ray, X-ray, read all about it. Julie Fraser, blonde actress, murdered. Police hunt killer who scalped beautiful victim. Read all about it. Interruptions. Oh, uh, coming, coming. Oh, it's you. Well, come in, come in, but you'll have to wait till I finish practicing. Uh, here, you can read the review of my last engagement. <laughs> I had them. How you see it? In the aisles. Now, quiet, please. Mm. Oh. What are you doing with that knife? <laughs> Let go of me, you. <laughs> What do you want of me, Mr. Cranston? Any information that might help us solve these two murders, Mr. Fleming? Both Julie Fraser and Jean LaRue were your clients, weren't they? I handle their business affairs. You don't seem very friendly, Mr. Fleming. Well, frankly, I'm tired of answering questions. Before you get too tired, here's something you might consider. The police judge the killer to be about your height and build, Mr. Fleming. What? Rather strange. Just a few weeks ago, you insured LaRue's voice and Julie's hair for large sums of money. That was a business proposition. Nothing to do with it. And this. stranger still that LaRue was stabbed in the throat... 
and that Julie's hair was brutally cut from her head. Look here, Mr. Cranston, you're not suggesting that I'm I... I'm just refreshing your memory, Mr. Fleming. Now, if you're ready to talk... What do you want to know? You say that Julie and Aru had no enemies. Did they have any friends in common? I only know one, if you can call him a friend. Who was he? Philip Dobre. Oh, the actor? Yeah, the most hated and feared man in the American theater. But why? Well, he was a jinx, Miss Lane. Whenever he appeared in a play, why, some disaster was bound to occur. And then besides, theater people say that something very strange happened to him during a tour that he once made in Australia. Hmm. Could you drive out with us to see Dobre tonight, Mr. Fleming? Oh, I'm afraid not tonight, Mr. Cranston. I have an important engagement. Uh, I'll send Ann Johnson with you. She knows the address. Ann Johnson? Yeah, my secretary, the young girl in the outer office. Oh, yes. You probably didn't notice her. Looks aren't her strong point, but her heart's in the right place. Well, come on, Margaret. We'll take Shrevey's cab in the corner. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Fleming, have you got a photograph of Dobre? Perhaps one of those on your wall? Well, I did have one, Mr. Cranston, but I took it down. I couldn't stand it staring at me. Why not? Well, in the theater we say that an actor grows to look like the parts that he plays. And Philip Dobre always played murderers. Say, this is a pretty unsavory neighborhood, Mr. Cranston. It's pretty unsavory. You sure this is where you want? What about it, Miss Johnson? Well, I'm sure it's the right street this time. I've only been out here once before. You came out with Julie Fraser? Yes, Miss Lane. Did you know Julie well, Miss Johnson? Oh, no, Mr. Cranston. Though, of course, I saw her around the office all the time. And poor Mr. LaRue, too. They were both such lovely people. Who do you think killed them, Mr. Cranston? I don't know. Have you any ideas? Well, Mr. Cranston, I'd say a nut, I'd say. Uh, you better slow down here. Okay. Which is the residence we're looking for? Which is the residence? Uh, you, you can't see it from here. The entrance is through that iron gate. All right, then I'll park here. i never seen a house with so many trays around it. i never seen. Uh, it's kind of spooky, ain't it? Uh, wait for us, really. Okay, Mr. Cranston. I'll be waiting, but, but don't be too long, don't be, please. Oh, we just go through this gate here, as I remember. Mm, it's so dark. And then down the driveway here to the side entrance. Mm. Mr. Dobre certainly makes it difficult for his visitors. Look at the yard. Gravestones. Waiting to be carved, apparently. Let's go back. This place gives me the creeps. Wait, hold it. Something's moving over there. Mm-hmm. Come out, you. I've got you covered. Now, don't shoot. Mr. Fleming. And And Mr. Cranston. What are you doing here, Fleming? I thought you had an engagement. Well, it was called off right after you left the office, Mr. Cranston, and I came out here to join you. What was the idea of hiding from us? Well, I got rattled, I guess. Something weird is happening over in Dobre's house. What do you mean? Well, I could swear I heard Julia's voice. What? Quiet. Dobre's coming out. Who's there? Who's spying on me? Show yourselves, you villains, or I'll slit your throat. Strange. <laughs> I was sure I heard voices. He's going back in. So that's the great Philip Dobre. He's handsome, I must say. Yes, isn't he? How oh, that women fell for him in his day. No. Please don't kill me, please. Listen. I don't want to die. Give me another chance, please. Please. Julie's voice. What? But it can't be. Julie's dead. Stay here, all of you. I'm going in to find out. <laughs> A strange delusion you have, Mr. Cranston. I'm certain I heard Julie's voice, Mr. Dubre. Yet you've searched my house and found nothing. <laughs> But then the imagination can play tricks on the mind of man. As an actor, I should know that. Did you ever see me in one of my celebrated roles? No. Ah, a pity. I was magnificent. The greatest actor of my time. I'd still be acting if it weren't for those fools. What fools? Actors I appeared with in the theater. They created the stupid legend that I was a jinx. And in consequence, forced my retirement. I hate them. Every last one of them. 
Someday, I'll get my revenge. Looks like you've already started. What do you mean? Julie and LaRue were actors. Are you suggesting... How dare you! Huh? Oh. Mr. Dubray, what is it? Oh. oh, it's nothing. It'll pass. Uh. There. That's better. Now, now you'd better go, Mr. Cranston. There's nothing in my house to interest you. Perhaps there is. Your home is luxuriously furnished, yet you've been retired for years. Where did you get the money? Did Julia LaRue give it to you? What What are you getting at? You had some kind of hold over them, blackmail most likely. You milked them for all they were worth. And when the game got too dangerous, you got rid of them. Mr. Cranston, I've asked you once to leave my house. Now get out, sir. Get out, I say! <laughs> you? Margot. What are you doing here in the back of the house? I told you to stay with Fleming and Anne Johnson. I was just looking around. What did you find out from Dope? Was that Julie's voice? Still can't be sure of anything yet, Margot. The old boy was furious. He practically threw me out of the house. As soon as I found the answers to some questions, I'm going right Darling, back. this may be one of the answers right here. Hmm? Look in his shed. Strange odor. It must come from pots along the wall. I'm going to get my lighter. Acid. For cleaning tombstones. And here they are. Two of them. Read what's written. Loving memory of Julie Fraser. The other one is for Jean LaRue. The same inscription on the base of each. Erected by an old comrade of the theater, Philip Dobray. Why was Dobray in such a hurry to have them made? Julie and LaRue were killed only two days ago. These headstones weren't graved long before that, Margot. If you look closely, you'll see the letters have already weathered. And that must mean that Dobre knew they were going to die. It certainly looks like it. This might be the clue we've been looking for, Margot. I'll soon find out. Where are you going, darling? Back to visit Dobre, Margot. This time as the shadow. <laughs> That interfering fool, Cranston. Try to pry into my secrets, will he? <laughs> he won't dare to come back here again. Ah. Thought I closed that door. Drafts must have blown it open. Yeah. Oh, it, it won't budge. What's holding it? Nothing but a shadow, Dobre. Ah. <laughs> but, who are you? I, I don't see anyone. No one sees the shadow. Uh, what do you want with me? The truth about Julie Fraser and Jean Larue. What is the mystery of the voice calling for help in here, Dupre? The, the, the voice? Uh, the, uh, that was Julie's uh, on, a, on a phonograph record. Don't lie, Dupre. I have recordings of some of our scenes together. I, I play them often. And do you often engrave epitaphs for your friends before they're dead? What? Why did you order gravestones for both Julie and Larue before they were dead? Why? They were both superstitious and, and afraid to die. They, they thought by erecting tombstones to themselves, they could deceive death. An old belief still practiced among the tribes of Australia. Uh, what do you mean? And you brought it back from down under to teach to the superstitious people of the theater. Didn't you, Dubray? How, how, how did you know, Shadow? So that was your racket. That was the hold you had over Julia LaRue. You set yourself up as a high priest of black magic and sold them your secrets. And I, I needed the money. I didn't mean any harm by it. That's for the police to decide. No, 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 Shadow. You mustn't give me away. I, I, I'll tell you anything you want. You know who killed Julie Fraser and Jean Larue? Yes. Someone they never suspected. Someone they thought was their friend. What was his name? Uh, Look out, Dupre, the window. Oh! oh my face! My face! <laughs> We'll return to the shadow in just a moment. But now, here they are, folks. Here are two more winners of the Carry Saw Contest and what swell letters they wrote. Letters which win each of them a gorgeous $100 17 jewel Harmon Gold wristwatch. The lady's watch goes to Millette and Rand, 1316 Rock Street in Little Rock. She gives a timely warning to you cooks who sometimes find that the grease in the pan on the stove has caught fire. Don't run to the sink and pour water on it. Just grab your box of Carry Salt and pour salt on the fire. Presto, the fire is snuffed out. Say, that's a good hint for all you listeners to remember. And here's the winner of the man's watch. He is Mr. Samuel M. Parker of Grand Junction, Colorado. 
He tells us of an easy way opticians have to fit lenses into plastic eyeglass frames. First, he fills a small pan with carry salt and heats it over a hot plate. Then he places the plastic frame in the salt. The frame expands, then it's easy to insert the lenses. When the frame cools, the lenses remain firmly in place. Congratulations to both of the winners. And folks, if you'd like to win one of these beautiful watches, listen for the easy rules later in this program. Meanwhile, remember, there's a fine carry salt for every farm and home use. There's deep penetrating Carrie's table salt, Carrie's meat curing salt, Carrie's mineral supplement salt, and many others. Always look for the white bag, box, or carton with a bright red band. But now, back to the shadow. Philip Dobray, the weird old actor, was about to tell the shadow the name of the mystery killer when a pot of acid was thrown into his face. A few minutes later, in Dobray's house, Margot, Max Fleming, and Ann Johnson are gathered around Dobray as Cranston bends over him. He's so quiet, Lamont. I'm afraid permanently, Margot. But how could acid... His heart was already weak, Mr. Fleming. He had an attack when I was talking to him. The pain and the shock was just too much. Then he's been murdered, just like the others. And his face disfigured. Yes, Miss Johnson. But who could have done it? I mean, we were all around the house. Surely we'd have seen whoever threw in the acid. Unless it was one of us. Mr. Cranston, you're not suggesting... We're all under suspicion, Miss Johnson. None of us has alibis. I was in one place, Margot in another. You and Mr. Fleming admit you lost touch with each other. Oh, but we... The next step is up to the police. I'll phone Commissioner Weston. Wait a minute, what's there? What? Something shining on the floor. This piece of velvet sewn with sequins. Mm -hmm. Could Dobre have dropped it? No, Margot, I'd have seen that. It must have been thrown in the window. Here, let me see that. Huh. Where have I seen this cloth before? Think hard, Mr. Fleming. I have it. Julie wore a costume made of it in our latest play. Are you sure? Almost positive. It was a play about the French Revolution, as I remember. Where would the costume be now? Stored away in Raft's theatrical warehouse. And soon check up if you're right. Shrevey's still outside with his cab. But, Lamont, if the cloth was dropped on purpose, maybe it was to lure us to the warehouse. A trap. I hope so, Margot. And I hope we find the killer there waiting to spring it. Watch your step, Margaret. This warehouse is littered with rubbish. You don't have to tell me, darling. These ropes hanging down, bumping in the nose every two minutes. It's horrible in here. Do we have to go on? Just a little further, Anne. We're almost at the costume. The very idea of a murderer lurking somewhere, even if it's one of us. Well, now, don't be frightened. Here, I'll take you wrong. Oh. Margo, you all right? Oh, yes, darling. And look what I've discovered. A lovely old spinet. It's been years since I've played one. Well, you certainly have a beautiful touch, Miss Lane. And beautiful hands. This is hardly the time for a concert, darling. Oh, sorry. Well, we're close now, Mr. Cranston. Ah, yes. You see, there's the guillotine. Guillotine? It was used in Julie's last play. The one about the French Revolution. That doesn't look much like a stage prop. Oh, this is a real guillotine, Mr. Cranston. With a razor-sharp knife. Well, isn't that unusual for the theater? Well, Dobre insisted on it. You see, he played the executioner. Darn it, another rope hitting me in the face. This time... Margo, look out! <laughs> what happened? The rope you pulled released the blade. Look, you jump back in time, darling. Yes. Oh, look. What is it, Anne? Behind you. Faces what? staring at us. Oh, it's all right, Anne. <laughs> They're just wax. Oh, yes, of course. So they are. Wax figures wearing costumes. And look. There's Julie's sequin dress on that figure. You see? Wait. The... What's the matter, darling? Something else of Julie's on that figure. Her hair. <laughs> Now that we've wound our way through that uh, maze of traffic, now that we've wound our way, Mr. Cranston, where to? Oh, anywhere, Shrevey. Just drive around. I, I want to think. Drive to my apartment, Shrevey. He thinks better over a cup of coffee. Okay, Miss Lane, you're the doctor. Can't make sense of it, Margot. 
Why would anyone take us on a wild goose chase through that warehouse so we'd find that horrible wax figure? Oh, like I told you, Mr. Cranston, somebody's nuts, somebody is. Yes, now all we have to do is find out who, Shreely. Well, I'll be glad to get home and clean up anyway. I'm sure I look a fright. Oh, dear. What's the matter, darling? Oh, I meant to give Anne back her compact. She dropped it in the warehouse. You see that? Why, it's Ben. Probably when she dropped it. The whole case is buckled. Oh. So it is. I think we're getting someplace at last, Marco. Step on it, Shrevey. We've got to drop Miss Lane off at her apartment. Nonsense, darling. If things are popping, I'm going with you. Now, listen, Margo, this is serious. It's as clear as daylight now that you're next on the killer's list. What? You're going to lock yourself in your apartment and not stir out till I get back. Well, where are you going, darling? Find out some very important things from Mr. Fleming. Dear, I can't let that coffee perk forever. I was so sure Lamont would be back by this time. There he is now. And Johnson. I'm sorry to be troubling you this time of night, Miss Lane, but I, I'm, I'm so frightened. Oh, has anything happened? No, it, it's just that I, I couldn't stand it all alone in my room after all that's happened. Oh. And, and then I thought of you and wondered if you'd mind if I came over. Oh, of course not. Please come inside. Thank you. You're so kind to me, Miss Lane. That's all. Hmm? Do I smell coffee? Indeed you do, Gus. Freshly made. I'll get it. I, I'll get the cups ready. It's just what we both need to cheer us up. Yes. Looks good. It is good. Well, hot anyway. <laughs> um, does Mr. Cranston know who committed these awful murders? Yes. I'm afraid it'll come as a shock to you, Anne, but you'll have to know it sooner or later. He believes Max Fleming to be the killer. Oh. Oh, and to think I've been working right with him in the office all this time. Well, it should be a relief to know you don't have to go back. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Except I don't know what I'm going to do about a job now. Oh. What were you doing before? I had a small part in the vaudeville act. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know you were on the stage. Oh, excuse me, Anne. I don't know why I'm yawning like this. I... I suddenly feel so sleepy. I know. Oh. Like your brain floating away. Oh, exactly. Oh. How did you know that? Because I put the drug in your coffee, Miss Lane. You what? It won't put you all the way to sleep. Just make you numb so you won't give me any trouble. Trouble? What are you talking about? You'll see what I'm talking about, Miss Lane. When we get back to the warehouse. What are you doing with that guillotine, Anne? Winding the blade back up. There, it's set. So you've come too, Miss Lane. Yes, and I feel so strange as if it were all a dream. Nothing matters. <laughs> Nothing will matter in a few minutes, Miss Lane. You'll never get away with this, Anne. I got away with it the other time. Why did you kill the man? Hmm. Surely never did you any harm. I couldn't get her pretty face and yellow hair out of my mind. Why couldn't I be like that instead of plain and dumpy? So I had to put her out of the way. Jean Leroux. Everybody was always talking about him, praising his voice. I couldn't stand that. Oh, but no one praised Philip Dobray. Yes, Miss Lane, you did. You called him handsome. Well, he wasn't handsome after he got that acid in his face. And you're not well. You need help. Here. Stop talking like that. It is true. You don't know what you're doing. Untie my hands, please. Yes. I'll untie them. Mr. Fleming thought they were so pretty when you were playing the spinet. Maybe he'll think different when the guillotine throw at them. No. Come on, stretch your hands out. Oh, please. Then I'll drag you over. You're as light as a feather to me. Something's holding me. What is it? 
The shadow, Anne. <laughs> let go of me. I'll make you let go. You're strong, Anne. Strong enough to twist a metal compact in your bare hands. Not as strong as the shadow. I'll show you. <laughs> Convinced, Anne? You win, Shadow. I give up. That's better. Now untie that girl. Let go my hand. All right, but... Anne, come back here. You'll never get me alive, Shadow. You fool! Don't say I'm mad. I'll die first. Let go that rope! Why did you pull me back, Shadow? I wanted to die. <laughs> you can't take justice into your own hands, Anne. The law, not you, will decide your fate. Well, Mr. Cranston, didn't I say right along it was a nut? You're so right, Shrevey. The only trouble is you didn't say which nut. I'm still a little baffled how you found out yourself, darling. Well, through the compact, of course, Margot. It was the clue I was looking for. When I realized that Anne had the strength to bend that metal, it put an entirely different complexion on the probable murderer. But I misunderstood you. I thought you said you were going out to Fleming. Well, I went to him to check up on Anne's background. When I found she'd formerly been in some sort of acrobatic vaudeville act and had been dismissed because of her insane jealousies, the case was all wrapped up. But it's till I got back to your apartment, darling, and found you gone. How did you ever guess that Anne had taken you over to the warehouse, darling? A pure hunch. I remember how Anne had looked when Fleming praised your hands. And then I remember the guillotine. Ooh. Hey, watch out, sweetie. Mm-hmm. One more thing. Hmm? Why did Anne lure us to the warehouse to find Julie's scalp? Her crazed vanity at work, Margot. It wasn't enough that she'd gotten away with murder. She had to flaunt her cleverness in our faces and be there to gloat. In her excitement, she twisted the compact in her hands. Really, what's the matter? I don't know, Mr. Cranston. I... I've been feeling dopey ever since... I drank that coffee in Miss Lane's apartment ever since I drank... You drank the rest of that coffee? Yeah, sure, I drank... Good heavens, Shrevey, stop the cab. You just finished off the rest of Anne's knockout drop. Friends, do you know some new or unusual way of using any carry salt? Then be sure you enter the carry salt company's exciting prize contest. You bet. Carry salt is giving away two gorgeous $100 17 jewel Harmon gold wristwatches. One man's watch and one lady's watch every week. And you may win. Listen to these easy rules. First, write 100 words or less describing some new and unusual way of using any carry salt product. Second, print your name and address on your entry. Third, mail to carries, C-A-R-E-Y-S, carry salt in care of this station. That's all. Nothing to buy. No box stops to send in. You can write about deep penetrating Carrie's round package table salt or Carrie's mineral supplement salt or Carrie's pickling and canning salt. Letters postmarked before midnight Friday will be judged in this week's contest and winners announced three weeks from today. The judges' decisions are final. All letters become Carrie's property. In case of ties, duplicate prizes will be awarded. Remember, the man and woman who write the most interesting letters describing some new and unusual way of using any Carrie salt product will each win a gorgeous $100 wristwatch. Send your letter to Carrie Salt in care of this station. Better jot that address down now. It's Carrie Salt in care of this station. Mail your letter today. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs>